Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Sunday. Um, today is Sunday, October 13th, um, day 373 since the attacks by Hamas on the south of Israel more than a year ago. Um, thank you for your patience that my update yesterday uh, was so quick. I'm glad to be home. Um, I'm now back on the East Coast. Um, today, there was significant news. The U.S. Uh, announced via the Pentagon that um, and uh, the White House, uh, the White House sent out uh, a notice at about four o'clock this afternoon, Eastern time, uh, to a, a letter um, to the American Jewish community confirming that at the direction of President Biden, um, Secretary Austin authorized the deployment of a terminal high altitude area defense. It's called THAAD, T-H-A-A-D, a battery, and an associated crew of U.S. military personnel to Israel to help bolster Israel's air defenses following Iran's unprecedented attacks against Israel on April 13th and again on October 1st. So the U.S. is sending this anti-missile system, but not only are they sending um, this weaponry, this anti-missile system, they're also sending U.S. personnel to Israel to counter potential attacks from Iran. Um, and so the goal is to strengthen Israel's defense. Um, you know, it is expected that Israel is going to counter attack Iran um, any day now. Uh, the Pentagon spokesman Pat Ryder um, announced this in a statement. Um, Israeli officials have said that they're going to retaliate for the barrage of ball ballistic missiles that were fired at Israel this month. Um, I did want to spend today, it's Sunday, it's a Sabbath day, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur. Um, that just happened this Friday. Um, Jews around the world uh, commemorated this holiday beginning on the evening of Friday. Um, what is Yom Kippur? Yom Kippur is the most solemn of Jewish religious holidays. It's when Jews seek um, to uh, expiate their sins, to achieve reconciliation with God. It concludes the 10 days of repentance that begins at Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. Um, and so this is one year after October 7th, a Yom Kippur um, ritual. Uh, an article was actually written um, in Haaretz that was talking about how a ritual of communal mourning takes on a fresh new meaning. And it said this, that leaders try to find ways to ritualize grief with some putting out supplements to the usual prayers that focus on the tragedy um, that has been unfolding over the last 12 months with no end in sight. The entire cycle of this year's high holidays was haunted by the October 7th attacks of last year, um, where Hamas breached Israel's southern fence uh, at the Gaza border. And Congregations around Israel, and this is Jewish congregations in Israel and across the world, have struggled with what that means then to uh, commemorate Yom Kippur this year. Um, you know, 1,200 people, of course, were killed on October 7th last year. Uh, we know, and those who've been listening uh, to these daily updates, that the death toll in Gaza is now more than 42,000 people um, on October 7th last year, there were more than 240 people taken hostage. Um, it's believed that, you know, 100 plus of those remain in Gaza with an unknown number of them having been killed thus far. And so um, in this article in Haaretz, the author Andrew Silo Carroll writes, Yom Kippur represents challenges after a traumatic year for Jews. The service said during various holidays throughout the year is often seen as an opportunity for people to commune personally about their close losses, if they've lost a parent, a spouse, or a child. But how do you balance the personal nature of what's supposed to be a day of introspection with communal grief over such a devastating attack? And as the article goes on, it talks about the way that Jewish congregations in Israel and around the world sought to wrestle with this question of personal introspection, reflection, but also corporate grief. Um, some congregations focused primarily, if not only, on Israel and Israelis and their suffering and trauma. And then others focused on a collective suffering, suffering not only of Jewish Israelis, but of Palestinians and of those in Gaza. And on Yom Kippur, the Jewish tradition says that it is a day of atonement. 
And something about the day carries an energy of healing and forgiveness that touches on the deeply human need for the release of guilt and resentment. Part of the tradition of Yom Kippur is making atonement, reflecting on past mistakes, asking for forgiveness. And with that in mind, um, as it's Sunday, and for those of us who self-identify as followers of Christ, I wanted to share um, a prayer uh, that was made known to me by Art Laffin. Art is um, a peace activist, and he gave me permission to share this. Um, we're going to publish this in coming weeks on our Prayers for Peace blog at Churches for Middle East Peace. This comes from Christians for Ceasefire, who has been actively engaged in calling for a comprehensive and permanent ceasefire uh, since the beginning over the last year plus. Um, this was a portion of a prayer of lament that was offered last Friday on October 4th outside of the White House during a prayer service for peace in Gaza and the Middle East to mark St. Francis's Feast Day. For our nation's role in the death of more than 42,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including more than 17,000 children, each of them precious and irreplaceable. Our leaders knowingly sent to Israel many of the weapons that have killed them. For this, we repent. So God forgive the wrongs we have done. God forgive us now. For our nation's role in allowing the suffering and trauma of countless wounded Palestinians, enduring unthinkable pain, including amputations and other procedures without anesthesia, and the many who face unnecessary death due to the deliberate destruction of most of the hospitals and the collapse of the medical care in Gaza, we repent. God forgive us for the wrong we have done. God forgive us now. For our nation's role in allowing the forced starvation and acute malnutrition and dehydration that has now widespread in Gaza amid chaotic and inadequate humanitarian aid deliveries, we repent. God forgive us for the wrongs we have done. God forgive us now. For the displacement of nearly 2 million Palestinians prevented from returning to their homes throughout Gaza and chased from place to place seeking safety we repent. God forgive us for the wrongs we have done. God forgive us now. For our nation's failure to advance a permanent ceasefire and to prioritize the release of Israeli hostages, as well as Palestinians who have been unjustly detained. For our failure to promote diplomacy towards a just and lasting peace for Palestinians and Israelis, we repent. God forgive us for the wrong we have done. God forgive us now. For our nation's failure to take meaningful action while Israeli army bombs Palestinian cities in the West Bank and Israeli settlers carry out attacks to escalate the attempt to push Palestinians off their land, we repent. God forgive us for the wrongs we have done. God forgive us now. For our nation's failure to take meaningful action to prevent Israel from escalating the war with Lebanon through bombings and assassinations, we repent. God forgive us for the wrongs we have done. God forgive us now. We stand with Jewish, Christian, and Muslim brothers and sisters who are working to end U.S. complicity in Israel's genocidal war and to help bring about a ceasefire, an end to the siege and occupation, and a just peace for Palestine and Israel. Now more than ever, we need to proclaim the gospel of nonviolence. In the name of Christ, amen.